seen this. You've actually seen this happening. Yes. Yep. Well, well, I mean, a northern will take a small. Well, that's the picture that's that I but got. But thirty-six on pounds is an awful lot yeah. for any fish to try to swallow. Even I mean, it's only fifty. Well, they've got the pounds. pictures. As you talked about an alligator, it looks yeah, like this. Look, the one big one is over top of the yeah, other one. No, no, and and their jaw yeah. is complete, open like that. Yeah. So when they come up and hit something. Boy. I didn't know we were going to talk about fish stories, no. but you do say it. Well, no, folk no, no, tales no, and folk, fish stories. Folk tales and fish stories. And I, and, and I have a, and one of the fish stories is in Norway, yeah. but, but um, you got the Dragaduka. I also have a story in there about trolls picking, in, well, in Norwegian, multibear, what um, they call them cloudberries. Mm -hmm. And um, trolls have to pick at night. You know, I mean, where cloudberries are is something to conjure, something to conjure with, and the uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you 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 uh, berry picking is one big thing, both in Norway and in northern Minnesota. And I mean, it's a real summer idol. You, uh, I mean, you you get several families going out going out for uh, for, for cloudberries. This is Norway yep. cloudberries, and I mean, it's a wonderful thing because the they're set packing. The women are packing sandwiches. Young kids are running all around and being impatient, ready to ready to go, and and then and then the men. And when they start out, it's almost like a ship, because these outriggers are all the kids yeah. going on ahead. And then and this is the, walking over the tundra, yeah, picking yeah, the on the way to. I, I mean that most of them are found next to forests. Yeah. What, you want me to? No, no, no. Okay, well, next to the forest, but out in the open. Yeah. So you're walking to there, a nice, bright, sunny morning, and and um, the men are sort of semicircled behind, and they're talking crops, weather, politics, fishing, and behind that, sort of similarly bunched, are all the women, with with their with their sort of aprons tucked in their in their skirts for easier walking, and they're talking kids, mostly, and then any other topic that that, that comes out, and then you get, then you get there, and then everybody starts berry picking, and it's a summer idol, and the one story mentioned an adult story, more than one heart has been lost in the midst of, among the, the bushes and scrubs on a bright sunny morning with a passion of more immediacy. Heart lost, don't you mean heart yeah. found? Well, no, 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 no. In other words, the couples are walking along and some of them are 18 yes, and in love. <laughs> yes, well, that's... <laughs> you what, one loses one's heart in the mountains. Oh, I see. Well, I would say they found their heart, wouldn't it? Be well, that'd be all right, but that isn't, that isn't what I said. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. okay. Just, just, just wondering about this. Yeah. Because that's the same thing you find out in Newfoundland. Right? Yeah. I guess it's the same as a, yeah. remember the... Norwegians had their first Viking settlement in Newfoundland in 1000 right. Right. at Lanso Meadow. You see, there's all kinds of stories about, about cloudberries, and one of them is about the Bishop of Oslo, who was, who was with the Bishop of Bergen, and the Bishop of Bergen was the host. And the Bishop of Oslo, a rotund man, and he finished off three heaping bowls of, of cloudberries and cream and said, God, obviously could have made a better dessert than cloudberries and cream, but obviously God never did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then so and and so trolls trolls pick berries too. Trolls like cloudberries. Yeah, very much. But they have to pick them at night. Otherwise it'll, otherwise they'll turn to stone. The trolls will turn to stone. Yeah. If if they pick in the sunshine. Yes. Um then then they will turn to stone. So any number of times when a, a family of the daylight, regular people, find a really good patch for picking and come back the next morning, it's, it's gone. gone because the trolls have been there overnight. That's right. That's I right. always wonder what happens. Yeah, trolls. and then there's some of the same things happen. Some people might think it was a bear or something, but it's really the Well, trolls. you could have a number. I mean, it, it, the berry picking in, in northern Minnesota has some of the same elements. And then there is, a, my brother would find a place to go berry picking. And then it never was as good as he said it was going to be, you know, mm. because something had gotten there. And that probably was bears. Raccoons like them, yeah. you know. And and um, I think there's other small critters of uh, grouse would eat would eat berries. 
So. Goes in Ptarmigan. Yep. So of course, is there any tar- I guess no ptarmigan in northern Minnesota. No, there's ptarmigan in Norway. No, ptarmigan in Norway. Well, yeah. I've gone out with David Hancock, of course, after white tails and yeah. willow ptarmigan well, and uh, rock ptarmigan. Ptarmigan turn white yeah. in the wintertime. But, just not, like, in, just but like, not in Scotland. Hmm? Not in Scotland. Not in Scotland. I no. didn't know that. The red grouse of Scotland yeah. is the willow ptarmigan of North America. Okay. And it's exactly the same. They, they, the blood type. Yep. Did they were they imported identical. by the Scots? No, no. They just, they're just along that northern hemisphere. Okay. And uh, the, it's exactly the same bird, except that the red grouse doesn't turn white in the wintertime. Isn't that interesting? So that's, because they do turn. I mean, I mean, just, but they just turn like in snow, Norway. This is like snowshoe hares. Yep. Are, are are gray all summer long into the fall. Yep. There's three and kinds of ptarmigan, and then they turn there's white. Three kinds of ptarmigan. There's a white-tailed ptarmigan, yeah. which is the most common. The willow ptarmigan, which is the second most ptarmigan, yeah. and is the red grouse of Scotland, and yeah. the rock ptarmigan, which is really rare and hard to find. There's also a sharp-tailed grouse. Yep, absolutely. And uh, that's that's in a corner of, of Minnesota and also into Manitoba. In Manitoba, lots of sharp-tailed yeah. grouse. Good stuff. Yep. Good stuff. Anyway, we're just about out of time, I think, okay. and I see that uh, Ellen Thompson has come in over there and is wandering around. Uh, she's not going to come on the air. She's not no, no, on I, the air I, I, I heard that. Too. She, she came to look at at, <coughs> at, at Mr. Swingle. Doctor Swingle's going to be here in another hour. Okay. But I'm going to kick you out of here. Yep. And you didn't expect to be here an hour ago. I didn't. I mean, no. the phone call was an absolute. I mean, I knew that, w- that you were interviewing Swingle tonight. 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 But I had no idea. But you didn't know I was going to interview you. No, too. you phoned. <laughs> and your wife's secretary phoned, and I phoned back, and you said, yeah. "Be here." Be here by six. You're going to go on at six thirty. And you got here at six o'clock or six o five or yeah, so, and like you went on at six thirty. Yeah. Now, mind you, the first half hour we didn't get on the air because we were had technical problems. Somewhere it was not. You know, we had no sound. We had a great picture, but no sound. Are, are we off now, or are we? No, no we're, we're still, still on the air. Okay. So why don't you give us a break then? Oh, let me just remind everybody: the book we've been talking about is folk tales and fish tales stories. Folk tales and fish stories, written by Dr. Christopher Paulson, illustrated by his son Kai. And can and I in, hold it up? And yeah. He's in really good company because. This book that I'm just holding beside it is Pierre Burton's book, Og, which was the same thing. It's tales that he told to his kids about the people that lived in the ground under their house. And his daughter, Patsy, Patsy illustrated it. Yeah. Weird, eh? No, no. Isn't that funny? I, I also want to say that, I mean, the publishing house is called Mop House. And in, on the, on the uh, inside cover, yeah. the, the title page, you'll, f- you'll find um, the address... And a phone number in case, oh, you, want, should, in case you want to well, call. Well, what is your phone number? 604-604-929-929-3876. And I'll give you my email. you got an email, too? i got an email. Oh. And that's paulson at sfu.ca, so that's paulson. P-A-U-L-S-O-N at sfu dot C-A. And SFU is Simon Fraser University. Right. Like one, Isn't that one nice? The, Even though you're retired, the major you retire, they still let you use an email address. One, right? one, one of the few perks of retirement. <laughs> Chris, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Been a pleasure. Thanks, Amelia. <laughs>